Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another edition of PS Viewer News. We've got about three things to talk about today so let's just jump right in, starting with Prey Viewer. So this story comes from a listing by UK retailer Shop2.net. Now they put up a listing today for Prey VR for PlayStation VR. Now there was no other information on their website. It was a blank box art, complete placeholder looking thing. All it said was Prey VR. But this was picked up on by Twitter user Nibel. Now this guy is pretty kind of well known, kind of respected in the gaming industry. IGN then ran with his tweets spread a lot of awareness about this and since then the listing has been pulled by shop2.net so it went up today went down today a bit suspicious now there is some people out there who think that this listing could be something to do with the dlcs for the game which do include a ps viewer support that there was one mode that was released after launch uh, as part of the moon crash dlc i believe i think it was called trans and it had like, escape room type puzzles uh, but there was supposed to be another mode called typhon hunter and that was supposed to get viewer support and never got PS viewer support. I remember that at the time the messaging was very confused on whether or not that was going to come to PS viewer. Now, the Prey IP itself is owned by Bethesda, and we do know Bethesda has a pretty good track record of supporting viewer titles Skyrim, Fallout, uh, Wolfenstein Cyber Pilots, and of course the aforementioned Prey DLC. All of that stuff got viewer support. Bethesda seems to be a believer in the technology, so it's not outside of the realms of possibility that Bethesda would authorize a VR version of Prey. Now saying that, just because it's called Prey VR, doesn't mean it's going to be a complete port of the 2017 reboot. It could be its own thing entirely, so keep that in mind. And of course, it could be just a complete fluke error. It might not be anything at all, so you know, take everything with a pinch of salt. But if you're someone who enjoyed the Prey games, or if you're just someone who wants, you know, a big single player, a well-known IP, to come to PSVR, then maybe keep an eye out for this. Next up, I want to talk about friends of this channel. And by friends of this channel, I'm talking, of course, about First Contact Entertainment. And that is because next week, we are finally going to see our first glimpse of Solaris Off-World Combat gameplay. Now, this is going to be coming from the Upload VR digital summer event showcase that they're going to be doing. So this is where First Contact Entertainment are going to be showing off Solaris gameplay for the very first time. All we've had so far is like a pre-render CG kind of thing that shows some fast paced, you know, arena multiplayer combats. But now we're finally going to get a first look. Now First Contact Entertainment also released this official image and it shows the logo that the game is going to have. And beneath that, we can see that it's still on track for 2020. Although, unfortunately, that is just for the Oculus. Us PlayStation VR owners do not know when we're going to get our hands on this. Hopefully, it won't be too long after. It might not be 2020 for us. We'll see how things go. Obviously, COVID-19 might have played a part in pushing this game back, you know, maybe longer than it was supposed to. But fingers crossed that someone from First Contact Entertainment maybe will mention the PS VR version when they're talking about it next week. If not in the video, then maybe on social media or other channels afterwards, hopefully. So this event from Upload VR is going to be on the 8th of June at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Now that is subject to change because some crazy stuff is going on right now. Maybe they won't go through with that and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next story. But just keep in mind that as it stands, it is the 8th of June at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So today's last story then is all about the PS5 event. So. When I was making this video, when I was writing the script, or kind of the script layout, this was going to all be about information about this event. I was going to tell you, here's what Sony are saying about us, here's what Jim Ryan is saying about us. They're going to be showing games, maybe there'll be PS Viewer games, maybe there'll be a separate event because he did mention on the blog that there was going to be, you know, other information to share after this event. But while I was making this video, PlayStation tweeted out this and I'm just going to read it. We have decided to postpone the PlayStation 5 event scheduled for June 4th. While we understand gamers worldwide are excited to see PS5 games, we do not feel that right now is a time for celebration, and for now, we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. So of course, they're referencing the protests, the riots going on over in America right now. Were they to go ahead with this event on Thursday, in the middle of all this chaos and crazy stuff that's going on over in America right now, it would have looked pretty bad it would have been tone deaf so i think sony are doing the right thing in this instance now it is hard to guess how far back this will push the actual event it could be pushed to july it could be further i mean it all probably depends on how much longer these the unrest or whatever you want to call it 
uh, goes on for in America. But while some people will no doubt be disappointed, and maybe there's the argument that uh, it would have been nice to have something to look forward to, like just as an escape, kind of, to avoid all the negativity and whatever that's going on right now. I think in the long run, Sony did the right thing. They made the right call. And I know they are like a big corporation, faceless, but this was kind of nice of them, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think they'll earn a bit of respect from people for making this decision, including me. And so that's it for this episode of PSVR News. Thank you very much for watching. But before I go, let me give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping this channel grow. And in particular, let me give a shout out to these top tier Patreons. Columbus Thomas III, Chopped 517, Tradition, Pete Hawkins and Crumb. Thank you very much for your continued generosity. I really do appreciate it. One last thing before I go, let me give a shout out to Decepticon. Let me thank him for letting me use his music all the time in all my videos. If you want to check out his music, the link will be in the description below. He's on Spotify. He's on Bandcamp. He's easy. You know, find him wherever you want him. So that's it from me, lads and ladies. Until next time, stay moist and above all, stay safe.